All right, um, for this video, we're going to do an ag and decomposition together. Um, I know ag and decomposition is not the funnest thing, um, but um, I believe I believe it's important for you guys to at least know how to do the most basic form. I don't need you guys to do like large matrices, 3x3, three 4x4, three, four four, but at least have an idea what it is about. and. Um, it will really be helpful to understand a lot of later algorithms. So, so without further introduction, um, our goal is to essentially solve this right here. What we want to find is the pair of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Let's call it lambda alpha v alpha lambda beta v beta so if you have a two by two matrix you're going to end up getting um, two of them um, it has to be a square matrix so basically two by two will give you two three by three will give you three so in this case we're going to get two so how do we get this pair this and this well, first you need to understand the idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The point is that for, any, for a given matrix, the square matrix, given a square matrix, there are some values and vectors that's really, really special with respect to this matrix. Those values that are special are called eigenvalues. And those vectors that's really special for this matrix are called eigenvectors. Okay? Now, what makes them special? Well, it makes them special based on the definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. If we have a matrix A, which is right here, right? The definition of eigenvalue and eigenvector, right? Specifically, eigenvector is a vector. Why is it special? Is that when you multiply V, the eigenvector, with A, it's equivalent to some number multiplied by V. Okay, so this is a number. What it's saying is that by multiplying V to A, you are just making the vector longer or shorter because you are not changing the direction of the vector, right? You're just multiplying the vector by some other number. So you make it longer, or maybe you make it shorter. So this matrix, right, this vector, well, sorry, this vector is special with respect to this matrix because this matrix views the vector, right, in, in conjunction, the matrix and the vector is almost as if the matrix is just a number. Right? The vector, when multiplied by matrix, is the same as the vector multiplying by some number. So, so this is why this, this number, which is the eigenvector, and this is the eigen, sorry, this is the eigenvalue, this is the eigenvector. This is why they're really special. And in a lot of mathematics, they just pop up. Right? And when they pop up, you recognize this pattern, a lot of things, all the rules around them, if you know them, then it just makes your life easier. And, and, and I mean, I can, they pop up a lot. So knowing them, knowing them is actually quite important for your later purposes. Okay, so how, then, then how do we go about finding them, right? How do we find eigenvalue and eigenvectors? Well, the first thing you have to realize is that we'll use this definition. A v equals lambda v. This means we can move this over here. That means a v minus lambda v must equal to zero. If this is the case, then we can actually pull it out like such. a minus lambda times identity is equal to times v, right, is equal to zero. So from here, from here, we realize that if this thing is zero, then the statement must be true. 
So how do you make, what do you mean that a matrix is zero? All right, so this is where the concept of determinant comes in. If you have a matrix, right, you can measure the size of it. Previously, if we have a vector, we measure the norm. Okay, norm. So norm takes a vector and outputs a number. With matrix, there are many ways. There are many ways to measure the size of this. And what we're saying is, if the size of this is zero, then it doesn't matter what v is. Whatever this v is multiplied by zero is going to give you zero. So the idea is, you want the size of this to be zero. And there are many ways to measure the size. Like this, a, a, a way is called a Frobenius norm. Frobenius norm. Right, but the way for eigen decomposition is called the determinant, D E T of A. The symbol for determinant is just two lines, absolute value sign. So when you see an absolute value with a matrix, that means you're looking for the determinant. Now, if you have a matrix A, let's say A is one, two, three, four, the determinant of A is really easy to find. It's just the cross subtract the cross. In this case, the cross is 1 times 4, right, minus the other cross, 2 times 3. That's it. That's, for, two, for 2 by 2, it's really, really easy to find a determinant. So, so that, that's really all. So what we are saying now is we want to find a determinant. Now, this means, let's say we have this matrix. I think it's 8, 2, 2, 5. 8, 2, 2, 5, minus lambda times identity, 1, 1, 0, 0. And we're saying we want the determinant of this to equal to 0. OK, so if we want this to equal to 0, let's, let's try to solve them. This would be 8 minus lambda, 2, 2, 5 minus lambda, the determinant. We want that to equal to zero. Now, how do we calculate the determinant for two by two? Well, I'll just show you. You do the diagonal, subtract the diagonal. Kind of like a reverse alpha symbol, right? So, in this case, it's eight minus lambda, five minus lambda, minus four is equal to zero. Notice, if we solve this now, if we solve this, we have the eigenvalues. So what does this give us? 8 times 5 is 40 minus 5 lambda minus 8 lambda plus lambda square minus 4 is equal to 0. So let's rewrite this again. Lambda square minus 13 lambda minus 36 is equal to 0. I think it's plus 36. Plus 36 is equal to 0. Well, uh, I hope you learned this in algebra. You basically split this, and it's 9, 4, minus, minus, right, is equal to 0. Now you have the roots, right, the roots. This tells you that the eigenvalue must be lambda alpha is equal to 9, lambda beta must equal to 4. And voila, you have now solved the eigenvalue. Now, a lot of you are stuck with how to find the eigenvector. That's because you need to go back into the definition. So the definition of eigen decomposition, sorry, of eigenvalue eigenvector, the definition of eigenvalue eigenvector is you have a matrix A times V is equal to lambda V. Start with this definition. This means that, this means that, and remember how this leads to a minus lambda i times v is equal to 0. Okay? Re remember how this led to this. So, now that we know lambda, we can just plug it in. Okay? So, what is A? Uh, 8, 2, 2, 5. 8, 2, 2, 5. Minus lambda. So, let's plug lambda alpha is equal to 9. Let's plug that one in. So if we plug that one in, is 
9900. And this whole thing multiplied by V should be 0. So what is this? This is minus 1, 2, 2, minus 4, I believe, times V is equal to 0. Well, uh, in this case, in this case, what I'm going to write the V out. So it's not V, it's V1, V2, OK? 0, 0. So that's what's happening. Well, we can multiply the equations out. So this is saying minus V1 plus 2V2 is equal to 0. And now this is 2V1 minus 4V2 is equal to 0. Now, the observation, so we have two equations, right? Two equations, two unknowns. So we can technically solve for V1 and V2. However, however, I want you to notice something. The, the, the key realization is that if you multiply this whole thing by 2, it'd still be the same. It'd still be at the same equation. If you did that, you end up minus 2, sorry, you, not 2, minus 2. So this would be 2v1 minus 4v2 equals 0. Two, and now if we copy this, it would be 2v1 minus 4v2 equals 0. So do we have two equations and two unknowns? No, because it turns out this equation is really just the same equation as the bottom one. So you don't have two equations, two unknowns. And that will always happen, right? You're going, you're, you're going to end up getting the same equation with agon decomposition. So what that is saying is you really only have one equation. 2v1 is equal to 4, sorry, minus 4v2 is equal to 0. Well, well um, we, the standard is to simplify it so that v1, uh, the, the lead, this is called the leading variable, is always 1. So if we divide this whole thing by 1 half, this is v1 minus 2v2 is equal to 0. And this tells us, this tells us that v1 is equal to 2v2. Okay? And since you don't have a second equation for v2, you can just write v2 is equal to v2. Right? This statement is true. Right? You have one statement that relates v1 and v2, but you don't have any statement that re then like relates v2 to something else. Right? So right here, this implies that for, for the eigen value of nine, lambda alpha, for, for lambda alpha, the eigen vector v is equal to v1 v2, which is equal to 2, 1, v2. Okay, so, so this right here is the eigenvector. Now, we always normalize the eigenvector. Therefore, therefore, with the eigenvector, after you do the normalization, make a unit length, the square root of 5, 2, 1. And voila, this is for for lambda alpha, v alpha is equal to this. We have found the first eigen uh, vector. Okay, so the eigen vector, eigen value again associated to this eigen vector. Uh, so this is the eigen value. This is the eigen vector. Okay, this remember we're trying to find lambda alpha, v alpha. And then lambda beta v beta. Okay, so let's let let's try to find the second one. Let's try to find the second one. The second one, I believe, is what was the second one? Four, right? Lambda beta is equal to four. So let's try to do that one. Lambda beta is equal to four. Okay, and what was the matrix? It was eight. 2, 2, 5, and we are saying that if we minus 4 identity, right, this whole thing times V is equal to 0, 0, okay? 
Remember the equation is a minus lambda i times v is equal to zero. Right. And how do we get this? Right. It was from the definition a v equals lambda v, and we move it over here. So that's how we got it. So, anyways, now that we know eigenvalue, we plug it back in. After we plug it back in, what do we do? Well, let's let's calculate this. So we move this in. So it's four and four. So 8 minus 4 is 4. 2, 2, 5 minus 4 is 1. Times V1, V2 is equal to 0, 0. Okay, so um, remember what we did last time. We can write them out into two equations and two unknowns. So this is 4V1 and then plus 2V2 is equal to 0. 2v1 plus v2 is equal to 0. And notice we have the same issue. If we multiply this whole thing by 2, then what will happen? If we, if we multiply by 2, then this becomes 4 and this becomes 2. Same problem. We don't have two equations, two unknowns. The second equation is actually the same equation. All right? So, you, so this, none, of this, none of this is good. All right, let's, let's erase them. So we only have one equation. Now remember I told you the standard, first thing you do is convert everything, convert everything, the first term, right, to 1. So you divide by 1 plus 1 half V2 is equal to 0. Now you have a relationship. The relationship is V1 is equal to minus 1 half V2. Okay? And again, you don't have a second equation, so you just write v2 is equal to v2. True statement. So, if you can write everything in terms of v2, we can pull the v2 out. So now we know beta right, must equal to 1 half and 1 v2. Okay, so... This is the eigen this is the eigen vector associated with with uh, beta equals to four. Now remember we always normalize them so we make it uh, length of one. So length of one would be well this is kind of annoying to calculate. So you can because okay the part that you may not know is you can scale this. Basically you can multiply by any constant v two. So this, you can, if you multiply by 2, this is equal to minus 1, 2. And guess what? They are pointing in the same direction. So you didn't change anything. All right? You point in the same direction. All right? Let's see. Minus 1, 1, 2. So minus 1, 2. That's pointing in this direction. But if you were to do minus one half and one minus one half and one right it's 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 the same vector so anyways why did i do that well it's just easier to normalize right we w we want to find a normalized version which then is one over square root of five minus one and two voila now you have it now you have it now you have both lambda alpha v alpha as well as Lambda beta v beta. Okay, this is this is the example of how you solve the problem today. All right, I um I hope that's that's helpful, and um and I will see you in the next class.